Hello everybody, this is Serpent, and in this video I will be showcasing Chord Finder, which is a rather nifty little program that I put together that will help you find the best key to play a song in, as well as how to play the chords of that song in that key, in a number of different ways. To download and install the program, first go to the Chord Finder page on my website, I'll put a link in the description, then scroll down to the bottom, press download, choose location for the zip file, and then extract the zip file. And that's all you need to do. This is a Java file, and it's a text-based application, so you're going to have to run the application in the command line. On Windows, I've included a bat file which does that for you, and so you can just double-click on the bat file to launch the program. On Mac or Linux, I'm not sure if the bat file will work, and so you can try it, but I'll leave that as an exercise for the user. All you need to do is run the jar file from the command line. So then, how does this work? Well, the goal here is to find the best key to play a song in. So to do that, we need to know which chords are involved in the song, so that we can find the most convenient places to play them. The program gives you some fairly detailed instructions on how to work it, but I'll walk you through it as well as we find the best key to play Rust by Evan Call. So the first step is telling the program what chords are in the song. I tend to find those by using Chordify, which is a free website that I'll link to in the description. I've already used Chordify on Rust, so I have the chords already written down. In order to input the chords, just write them as a comma-separated list, and you can't use flats, just sharps. So these chords are C minor, C, D sharp, F, A sharp, G sharp, etc. And as you can see up here, <laughs> there are some fairly strange ways you can write the chords. So however you end up doing it, it's probably okay. Then you press enter, and it will ask you what fret you want for the first display. Now this doesn't actually matter for the key finding bit, it's just a convenient way of finding the different ways you can play these chords at the given fret. So first I'm just going to use zero, which is like when you're playing without a capo in standard tuning. So then, we've just received a lot of information. The first bit is up here. This tells us that the chords of the corresponding letter here can be played in these ways over here. G, for example, can be played with a G shape, which is no surprise, or you can also play it with an E bar chord at the third fret. Or alternatively, you can play it with a D bar chord at the fifth fret, or a C bar chord at the seventh, F bar chord at the second, or an A bar chord at the tenth and that information is a little bit more useful. Next, we're asked to assign a priority to the chords, and there's an example here. So what we're doing here is telling the program which chords are most important, how important a chord is. And the way I determine this number, usually, is by listening to the program through Chordify and tallying up the number of times each chord appears in the song. I tend to figure that if a chord appears lots of times, it means you're going to be switching to that chord lots of times, and so you want that chord to be easy to play. I've already figured out the priorities for these chords. And again, this one is also a comma-separated list of numbers. The priorities don't actually have to be integers, but they generally are because I use the number of times they occur in the song. So let's press enter again. All right, now we get more information. This table here is the set of fret scores. The frets are listed on the left, and on the right is their score. The idea here is that at every fret, you're going to be able to play some selection of the chords without having to use bar chords. And the more you can play without having to use bar chords, the easier it will be to play that song at the given fret. So top on our list here is fret number 3, with a score of 51. And the score of 51 means that you can play a selection of the chords here whose collective priority adds up to 51. And that's the highest score on our list. You can see 8 is 44, 10 is 42. It just keeps getting lower and lower until you get down to 9. And at fret 9, you can't play any single one of these chords without having to use a bar chord. So that would not be a good capo position to choose. Finally, we have another table of chord letter to fret shape. And what this tells you is that you can play one of these chords, let's say G again, by using any of these shapes with the capo on this fret. So for example, if you put the capo on the third fret, and you want to play a G chord, you can do so by using an E shape. And that's the most convenient way to play it, because all the rest are bar chords. And that makes sense, of course, because if we scroll up, we can see over here that if you don't have a capo on, you can play a G chord by using an E bar chord at the third fret. And that's like if you had a capo on the third fret and we're playing an E shape. So let's peruse our list of options here. We have A sharp, which can be played just with a simple G chord, A sharp minor, which doesn't have a nice convenient shape, but then again, it's only in the song once, so it's not a big deal. We've got C minor, which can be played as A minor. We've got C, which can be played as A. D minor, again, not playable without a bar chord, but D minor only appears once. We've got D sharp, which can be played as C easily. F, which is a nice D. 
F minor, which is a nice D minor, of course, G, which is E, G minor, which is E minor, and G sharp, which is F. So that did really well. There are only two chords that can't be played without using a bar chord, and both of them are single occurrences in the song. And in fact, when I figured out an arrangement using this key for rest the other day, I didn't actually use A sharp minor or D minor, because neither sounded good where they were suggested by Chordify. So I think Chordify messed up there. And so the arrangement that I figured out for the song doesn't use any bar chords whatsoever. If, however, I had just tried to muscle through using fret zero, I would have had to play A sharp as a bar chord eight times, D sharp as a bar chord eleven times, C minor as a bar chord 10 times, and that's all very inconvenient. So then, that's that for the showcase. Hopefully you find the program useful, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments, or if you have suggestions. If it turns out that enough people want it, I might actually put together a user interface for this program, but it's such a simple little tool that using it as a text-based program works just fine anyway. So have a good day, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.